Okay, so um, now we're going to get fancy. We've got 15 more minutes left. We're going to get fancy with constraint satisfaction. Um, so forward checking, we'll do Mac on Wednesday, which is just fine. We're right on schedule. Forward checking, this is great. This is extremely clever. I don't remember who thought of forward checking first, but do you know how you don't have to? Remember. Yeah, uh, great idea. It's definitely a 20th century idea. It might have even been here at UNH. The like, number one guy in the world on constraint satisfaction used to be a professor here at UNH. Um, forward checking, yeah, I don't remember who came up with it. Anyway, fabulous idea. And it's very intuitive. So let's say I'm coloring a map of Australia, which I just happened to have brought with me. Where is my map of Australia? Urgh. Oh, crap. Here it is. Uh, okay, let's copy it down here. All right, we've got Western Australia, the Northern Territories, the creatively named South Australia, then uh, Queensland, uh, New South Wales is over here. Uh, and here's Victoria, and then Tasmania is off the coast here. Um, so that, some people don't think that's a map. Okay, fine. What this is, this is a very abstract thing. This is actually called the constraint graph. These are the decision variables, and between every pair of variables that is constrained, I have drawn an edge. So that's the, called the constraint graph. And it's great to real distill the problem down to its essence. And uh, people often uh, specify algorithms in terms of their operations on the constraint graph. Um, okay, so forward checking, it's this fabulous algorithm. So let's see, we're gonna start off here are our decision variables, Western Australia, Northwest Territories, Southern Australia, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania. Um, and we're going to start off, let's say we have three colors, uh, R, G, and B, just to be a computer scientist about it. Um, R, G, B. This is called the domain of the variables. Each variable has a a domain of size three. Okay, and now we're going to pick something to color. Okay, so let's pick Southern Australia. So my search tree is going to be oh, let's we're going we're to branch on colors for Southern Australia. R, G, and B are the different possible values for it. Now. Let's, let's first consider this red option here. Okay, so, so we, we get rid of those two other options and now Southern Australia is now red. Now, ordinarily, we would then take something like Western Australia and we would branch on the different values that it could have, red, green, and blue. And then we take the red branch and we'd follow Frank's advice and we'd check the constraint right away and we'd say, ah, Western Australia is red, Southern Australia is red. This is a diff constraint saying the variables have to be different. Oh, darn. And we'd backtrack. Forward checking thinks ahead. Forward. Looking forward. Anybody want to guess what forward checking is going to do to the domain of Western Australia? Lee. Yes, thank you, sir. It's a chunk. So when we get around to Western Australia, that option doesn't even exist. Not only that, forward checking is going to go to every variable connected to Southern Australia in the constraint graph and eliminate the conflicting value. So it's going to go to the Northwest Territories and Queensland and New South Wales and Victoria. And it's going to eliminate red because that's incompatible with the value we just gave South Australia. Nathan. Oh, yes, it does. It does. You stole my thunder. Um, 
That's okay. That's okay. It does. So it does, it, the answer is yes. Um, so um, this is called forward checking. You you look ahead to the, to the other connected variables and you remove conflicting values from their domain. Believe it or not, there's a technical term called, and I kid you not, domain wipeout, <laughs> where the domain gets completely emptied of, of feasible values. And forward checking, when you have domain wipeout, it says, whoa, the variable I just assigned, nuh-uh, not that value ain't going to work, without even having to do any backtracking, right? Beautiful algorithm, fantastic. Um, so yeah, so, so forward checking detects domain wipeout, um, and it's, that's very, very handy. Um, and that will cause backtracking right away. So all we did was one assignment, and we've already eliminated one, two, three, four, five options. So now we go to poor old Western Australia. We're going to pick a value. Looks like green is the first one. So we're going to set Western Australia to green. Instantly, bang, we're going to do forward checking. Right away, so we go to Northwest Territories, which are connected here, and we say, oh, you're not, you're not going to do green. Whoa, look at this. For free, we now know the value for the Northern Territories without doing a bit of work on branching or anything. Instantly, we know what the value has to be, which is great. Now, in, if we want to be real strict about this, forward checking does not itself go to set the value of Northern Territories. All forward checking does is eliminate values. Um, so, but I don't think there are any more values we eliminate by setting Western Australia because Southern Australia is already set. And so we, we eliminate G from the Northern Territories. Uh, but one heuristic technique, just to overload the word heuristic on you again, um, is to choose next the variable that's, that has the fewest options. And a variable that has only one option is clearly about as constrained as you can get. So we would immediately branch on the Northern Territories, and there's only one value it can have. So it immediately gets set automatically. And then we propagate, would we set the value here, then we propagate to Queensland. What's Queensland end up looking like? Yeah, we eliminate blue from that. So that will be the next variable we'll automatically select, um, and life is good. Uh, so we'll then set green, and then we go to that, the forward checking from Queensland will eliminate green here, telling us we have to set New South Wales to blue, which then propagates to Victoria. Um, so we only had to branch twice on two variables, and forward checking has solved the entire problem for us. It's a very nice technique. Because remember, search is exponential in the number of branch points. These, don't, these hardly count as branches because there weren't any branches. There was only one branch. So they're not, they're not options for backtracking. So they don't exponentially explode the tree at all. So. That's forward checking. That's the, that's the great idea for the second half of the class uh, today. Forward checking. I think I have this written out, uh, the algorithm written down on a slide. Let's see. Oh, I even have the word wipe out right on the slide right there. Technical term. When assigning a variable, remove the conflicting values for all connected variables. Backtrack on domain wipe out. Um, so that's fabulous. Now you might ask, Okay, that's a lot of work to do the forward checking. I realize it gives you exponential savings in the depth of the tree, but is all that work really necessary? And just to leap ahead, because I think, is that clock correct today? Now I'm freaking out about the clock. Yeah, we're okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, well, I'll do that in a sec. It makes a huge difference, especially when you use forward checking with these, these are, I'm sorry to use the word heuristic in a different meaning in the same class, but a heuristic evaluation function for a shortest path problem is a lower bound on the cost to go. Heuristics for constraint satisfaction problems are something completely different. They're how to organize the tree. 
Uh, so that they're kind of similar to heuristic evaluation functions, but a little different. A variable choice function, a heuristic variable, a variable choice heuristic tells you which variable to branch on in the tree here. So when we're trying to decide which variable to do next, I said that it was good to choose a variable that had a small domain. That's called the most constrained variable. So that, that ends up being a good choice. And when you're looking at which branch to do, um, some people get really fancy and they do forward checking for each value and then look at the one that caused the most removals um, and do that one last. They do the fewest removal one first, the least constrained variable first, least constraining value first, sorry. Least constraining value. And the intuition behind these two heuristics, for variable choice, if you choose the variable with the smallest domain, you lower the branching factor. So you're keeping, because there, there aren't as many choices to explore. So that helps keep the tree small. For value choice, the intuition is a little different. Um, which value should you try first? Well, there are two things that are going to happen when you explore this subtree underneath this variable. Either, this, either you're going to find a solution or you're not. Now, if you, have to, if you don't find a solution, you're going to have to explore all the values. So it really doesn't matter how you order them. But if there is a solution, you want to find it as quickly as possible. So you, you go first to the value that looks like it is most likely to lead to a solution. And that's the one that wipes out the fewest other choices for the other variables. Because if you wipe out a lot of choices for some other variable, you're going to cause domain wipeout and we'll have to backtrack. So we always try the least constraining value first. If you use these heuristics work really well with forward checking, because if you use forward checking, then the uh, domains get shrunk a lot and, and certain variables become extremely promising. If you use these heuristics, if you do plain old chronological backtracking on a map of the United States, you expand more than a million nodes. If you use forward checking, it's down to 2,000 nodes. If you use forward checking plus the most constrained variable, 60 nodes, color the whole map. We went to more than a million down to 60. Big improvements. Uh, this is all the end queens puzzles from like six by six to like 20 by 20. Um, more than 40 million nodes, even with forward checking, but you use most constrained variable and you're down to less than a million. Uh, these are, uh, this is a logic puzzle. Um, it's like there are houses and people living in the houses or something, and there's an animal in each house, and the guy that has the badger lives next to the guy that you know eats lasagna or something, and you know one of those annoying things, and you're like, ah, how does it all go? Who's with what house? Um, almost four million backtracks with plain old backtracking. Thirty-five thousand once you add forward checking. You do most constrained variable, only five hundred. So these things really work and make a huge difference.